Hello everyone and welcome. If this is your first episode watching the channel, welcome back if you've been here before. If it's your first uh, video that you're watching here, it's a good one. You picked a great video to watch. We're in the cactus mecca of the world, in my opinion. It's definitely the country with the most cacti species which are endemic to the region. I, I'm hoping, or, or I guess most of you already know I'm talking about Mexico. There's about roughly more than 1,500 species of cacti out of which 700 live in this country and out of those 700 about 80 percent are endemic to the region so the biodiversity of uh, cactus plants in this country is just astounding there's no other place like it in the world so I, I thought it would be a great idea to start off our habitat exploration videos here hopefully right now you're seeing some of the beautiful shots of this amazing expressway This trip was all about Coahuila, that's our ultimate destination, but we decided to drive two hours out of our way down to the state of Nuevo Leon. The plants that we're going to see today and tomorrow are that special. And of course I'm talking about Astichium. With only three species in the genus, it's got to be one of the most cryptic and interesting genus of cacti in my opinion. Uh, I hope you find them just as interesting because it's, it's definitely a challenge to find them in the wild but we're gonna share the experience with you guys and hopefully get you involved and get you passionate and, and fall in love with these plants just as much as we are because I believe that's the only way to get people to uh, not only understand but appreciate and, and fight for conservation um, these plants have survived some of the harshest environments known on the planet but the one thing that they're not going to be able to survive is human interaction unless we're able to understand that they're valuable members of their ecosystems. They take decades to grow and reach a certain size where they're able to reproduce and produce flower and seed. So it's definitely our responsibility and I'm talking about us cactus collectors and cactus lovers to do whatever we can to keep them around for future generations. I'm hoping that when you see these videos uh, and you see them in context and you see just how harsh the environments that they're able to survive are and you understand a little bit about their history and about how they evolved and managed to survive in these environments, um, you will become passionate about conservation too. Um, and it's important that we become passionate about conservation simply because it's up to us to invest our, our dollars or our plant budgets in the right kind of plants and I mean cultivated plants. It's up to us to determine where the market is going and if we refuse to buy habitat poached plants well cactus sellers are definitely not going to offer them because nobody is going to try to sell a product that won't sell. So it's up to us to make sure that we do the research, we learn how to identify these habitat plants and we refuse to buy anything that looks like it was pulled from the habitat. So enough of that, <laughs> now we're gonna get to the good stuff. Uh, we're going down one of the most beautiful highways I have ever driven in my life. Um, we're going south from Monterey and we're going to share some sort of location uh, information with you all so that you get a sense of, of roughly where we are but we will never share names of towns or specific locations because unfortunately just like some people are looking to see these videos because they love these plants and they want to conservate them and keep them around there are also other people who want to find them to poach them and to exploit their habitats and we want to try to avoid that so we're going to do our best to obscure the locations where they are we will share names of cities and things like that so that you get a rough estimation and understanding of the ecosystem and the region but never anything uh, very specific um, today we're going to see astichium riteri it's one of my favorite of all the astichium but in reality i say that about all of them so <laughs> don't take my word for it odds are i'm gonna repeat myself over and over again because i am just very very passionate about all of these plants and when you see them in their habitat, you see them in context and you're able to understand why 
they've evolved the way that they've evolved and, and what sort of things uh, you need to do in cultivation to keep them alive and more, more importantly the reason why you have to do certain things to keep them alive in cultivation. Hopefully you'll fall in love with them too. We're finally here. We got a little bit lost, but we made it just before the rain. There's still a little bit of sun, and I'm seeing raw gypsum, which is the best sight to see here in Nuevo Leon, because when you see raw gypsum, it means a stickum are nearby. So let's go. Friends, we have arrived to the promised land. As you can see, this guy is extremely tiny, but once you see the first one, they start popping up all over everywhere. And a dead giveaway is this beautiful gypsum formation. Once you start seeing these formations on the walls, you have to be very careful, not only where you step, but you have to be looking at every single tiny little crevice because they're all over the place, but they like to hide, they're so small that they're, they're difficult to see if you're walking past them. So we're, we've slowed down. Um, now we know we're in the right area because we found the first one. And we also saw an even smaller seedling over there. It must have been like two millimeters wide. So we're in the right location. We're gonna keep walking up the canyon. Um, but you can sort of see the, the crazy little ecosystem that lives on these vertical walls. Um, you have the Selaginella or the resurrection plants they're actually very active and green right now. The last time we were here, they were completely dried up. They were in drought. Um, and this plant is, is known for having one of the most extreme adaptations to drought. When they experience drought, they turn completely brown and they go into total desiccation. And at the first sign of rain, they start turning green. It's been very rainy these past couple of weeks here in Nuevo Leon. And basically that's why we're here. Whenever there's rain, in, awesome things happen in the plant world. So the Selaginella is up and awake everywhere. There, you see all the little green patches all over the walls. And obviously the star of the show is this Astichium reterii that we came to see. Uh, but we're gonna keep going up the canyon, hopefully find bigger families of them uh, to show you some really, really nice specimen of this gorgeous plant. Um, that you can only find in this one location in the entire world. It's pretty mind-blowing, at least to me, that one plant can evolve to survive in just this one tiny ecosystem and nowhere else. So I hope you're enjoying this. I'm certainly enjoying it. This is like Disneyland for me. I mean, I never smile as big as when I am here. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying the experience. So we're gonna keep going up the canyon to find some more. Guys, we have hit the mother load. The last time we were here, we must have walked right past this population here. Um, and I'm guessing since it's been raining these past couple of weeks, uh, you'll probably hear the thunder rolling. It's been very threatening. So we don't know when it's gonna start raining, but we're hoping we can get as much content as possible before we have to run out of here. Um, but the rain has made all these things extremely plump and fat. 
So it's, it's obviously way easier to find them now. So we were able to spot this uh, sort of family here that we never saw the last time we were in this canyon. We were finding all of them on the opposite side, but this population seems to be extremely healthy and it's thriving. There's gotta be at least 20 plants per square feet here. And I see a lot of seedlings, which is also a very good sign when you find an ecosystem. Obviously it's good to find mature plants, but the, a good sign of a healthy ecosystem is finding the seedlings because that means they're effectively reproducing and seed is germinating. So we're finding exactly what you want to see. I'm, I'm very happy to see that these guys are happy and healthy here. And I hope um, no one can find them, to be honest. Uh, that's why I, I think it's important that I share this experience with you all so that you will not only learn to identify them and, as I said before, fall in love with them and be passionate about conservation and making sure that these plants live on for next generations to see. Because just thinking that these things are alive is incredible. Just to think of the extreme amount of, of hardship that they have to endure to survive, it's unthinkable to imagine that human beings could be the reason why they, they disappear. So I think we, we are all responsible if we're collectors and lovers of these plants to preserve and to conserve what we love and you know, sort of spread the message. So that's why I'm gonna repeat myself a million times. I'm sorry, but I, I just think it's necessary and I think it's my responsibility and that of anyone who comes here and shows these treasures because that's what they are. They're national treasures of Mexico and of the world basically because they don't exist anywhere else. So I hope that you guys are having fun and enjoying this and appreciating this. This guy here must be about an inch and a half wide and he could be 20 or 30 years old. Um, it's almost impossible to date habitat plants because they grow at such an extremely slow rate uh, that it's, it's really hard to tell for sure just how old they are. But judging by their size, you can sort of estimate that they must be pretty old. These are all mature and blooming and some of them have old dried up blooms, which is great to see because that means there's seed being dispersed in the area. And even more awesome is to see the tiny little seedlings. So we're gonna show you as much as we can before we get rained out of here. So enjoy it. One of the many fascinating characteristics of Astichium ruteri is that being a dwarf cactus, it's had to evolve some quite amazing morphology in order to take advantage of such a small size and survive its environment. If you look closely, the 8 to 15 ribs are divided by transverse furrows or little wrinkles that not only contract and expand during periods of drought and rain in order to provide the plant with more storage space for moisture, but also shade most of the plant's surface when it is exposed to direct sunlight. And those wrinkles also increase the surface area of the plant tenfold when compared to a sphere of the same size, meaning the plant is able to have more tissue to carry out photosynthesis. All right guys, we got rained out. <laughs> this is definitely a land of extremes. Um, you can hear the thunder rolling. It's, it just started raining incredibly hard from one second to the next. But what an experience it was to see exactly what these plants go through on a regular basis. It's basically hot as hell, one minute and the next you're being drowned by rain. I live in Miami and I thought I had seen strong rain, but these droplets are fat and cold. <laughs> but I'd say this was a mission accomplished. We got what we came here for. We made it right before the sunset and right before the rain. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. We're gonna make some in incredible content coming up, so I would suggest you subscribe and catch you on the next video.